Hey folks, this is Meredith from the Papery Craftery. Today I'm going to be sharing a demo how to make quilling paper daisies. And this is going to have some new techniques and some old techniques. And if you stay to the end, I'll show you how to put it all together into a sweet little design. For the colors, we're going to be using bright white and two different shades of yellow. And then I'm also going to be using a green for some leaves. You will need a ruler to measure a bit. Whatever quilling tool you prefer, I'm gonna be using this slotted tool for half of it and also my needle tool. I will be using some scissors because we're gonna be doing some fringe work. Whatever glue you like, this is just white glue in a needle nose container and you probably will wanna go ahead and grab a work board with some wax paper on it and some pins because you're gonna to want to have a nice smooth surface to build your flower. We're going to start by making the center of the daisy and this is where the two different shades of yellow paper come in. I have a pale yellow and then also a deeper yellow doesn't matter how long these strips are, but what does matter is that they're the same length. I'm using them straight off the roll, so they're about 18 inches long. What we're going to be doing is sort of sandwiching the pale yellow in between two pieces of the deeper yellow, but have the pale yellow a little bit higher, sticking out a little bit. So what I do first that I, you just saw was run some white glue around one edge of the darker yellow. I just do a little bit at a time, especially to start with, because I wanna make sure that I don't go crooked. It's very easy to get this off center and then after a while, it's gonna completely go off the edge. So I just do about an inch to start and line it up so that the pale yellow is just, just on the edge and then hangs off a little bit. Then I fold back the yellow, the pale yellow, and do a little bit more glue around the edge, bring it back over, and get it all lined up again. Now I'm doing this on this entire sheet, this 18 inch sheet. You do not have to do that. You can just make it the size you're gonna need later for the individual flowers. Each daisy is gonna use about between a four and a six inch length of the sheets that are sandwiched. So it definitely will probably be, be easier to just tear off even lengths of the paper and just do say a four inch or a six inch strip like this. If that makes you feel more comfortable, especially in the beginning, go ahead and do that. But here is the finished length. So I have the dark yellow and then the pale yellow on top of it. And now I'm going to use a second piece of the darker yellow and line that up right on top of the first piece. So on both sides, I'm gonna have the pale yellow sticking out a little bit higher than the darker yellow. So now I'm gonna be putting glue on the other side and then lining up the dark yellow on top of that. Again, trying to make sure that it doesn't go crooked off the sides. But now you can see that the dark yellow, I know it's hard to see because yellow is, is the light color, but the dark yellow is lined up right on top of each other and then the paler yellow sandwiched in between but coming out a little bit further. So now I'm going to continue on the rest of the strip, just doing a little bit of a glue at a time just to make sure that I don't go off the edge and that everything lines up nicely. Like I mentioned a little while ago, you will not need this entire length of 18 inches or however long your paper might be for each individual daisy. I found that between four and six inches makes a good center. 
So go ahead and measure off. This one I ended up doing four just for time's sake. And that is gonna be the inside of one of the daisies. The rest you can put aside, use it for more flowers. And now I'm going to fringe my paper. And all that means is just using a very small pair of scissors, I'm just gonna make small little snips in the pale yellow side. And it will go through a little bit towards the darker yellow, but not all the way through. I don't want to be cutting this paper into pieces. I'm just making tiny little snips right on the edge. There is a tool that will fringe paper for you. I don't own one. It's, it's, it's more expensive than most quilling tools, but I've seen them for around $15 or so. I've never used one even. Um, I probably should go ahead and just pick one up but it hasn't happened. Um, so this is the technique I use. It definitely takes longer, but it's not, it's not an eternity. It really isn't that bad for the amount of fringe projects that I do. I like just the little snips with a scissor. And when I get all the way to the end, that is gonna be it for the scissors for this project. After that entire strip is fringed, I'm going to roll it on a slotted tool into a tight coil. So just roll it all the way up from end to end. There is a chance of these papers snapping or, or breaking apart because of that fringe. Sometimes it goes a little bit deeper than you expected and can cause your paper to tear into pieces. Just just glue it back together. It's not a big deal. We're not gonna let this open up, so it's okay if you have to glue it in pieces. This one worked out pretty well, but I've had plenty of them tear into two or more pieces. When I get all the way to the end, I'm going to apply a bit of glue and close that up. When you take it off of your tool, you're going to have, oh, and sometimes it doesn't, stick all the way when you roll it and glue it, and that's okay. Let's get that down there a little bit further. What you want to be doing after you get it off of your tool is sort of dome the center a little bit. You want it to, this really wants to give me trouble today, so I'm gonna add a little bit more glue. Sometimes things don't work out. Not everything is 100% every single time. Everybody has issues sometimes. There we go. So now that that is off the tool, you're gonna wanna dome the inside just a little bit. You really want that center fringe to be up higher than the rest of the flower. So I used the inside of my, or the underside of my tool just to push out the center just a little bit and get that fringe sitting up really nice and high. That's gonna be the center of my flower. Now it's time to make the petals. And I'm gonna be using that bright white paper and six inches at a time. Again, you can use that same slotted tool if you want to. Most of the time I prefer to use a needle tool, so that's what I'm going to be using and Roll up that six inches from end to end. We're going to be making a coil, but then we're gonna form it. So we're gonna take it off our tool and let it open up just a hair. I'm gonna keep it in my hand, guide it just so it just opens up. I'm not gonna let it go crazy, just, just opens up. And then glue the end down so that shape stays. We're gonna be sort of forming it into a little bit something different here. I'm gonna show it a couple of times. First, I do a hard pinch on one side and then a quick little pinch on the other side. Off center, you're looking for sort of a flat bottom. You make it with a 
long pinch and then a quick pinch on the other side. It's kind of, like I said, flat on one side and then an off center round on the other. I'm gonna show it again with this other six inch strip because each petal is gonna be made up of two of these shapes. So I take another six inches, roll it up from end to end, hold it in my fingers to just ease it open so it, all those layers start to come apart. Glue down the tail with a spot of glue. And then here comes the form again. A long pinch on one side, real strong, and then quick pinch on the edge of the other end. And that's going to help you get that flat bottom and a curved top. Next thing we're going to do is glue those two pieces together with a little line of glue down the center. We're going to glue them flat side to flat side. And I'm mostly pinching real hard to keep them together on the thinner sides. I don't want them to come all the way together on the other side. I kind of like that little indent on the top there. So I didn't put any glue right there on the top between them. And I pinch real hard on the other side. And that's the petal for your daisies. You're gonna need somewhere between eight and 10 for each of your flower, depending on how big you made your center with your yellow fringe. Now it's just a matter of gluing your petals to the fringed center. You can do the dip method like I'm doing here. You can use tweezers if you like those. You can individually glue each one if that is your jam. Just however you'd like to get them on there. I would recommend using the wax paper because sometimes the glue gets underneath your petals. With wax paper you can just peel it off pretty easily. Look right there. Already made a mess. And you might need to adjust your petals here and there once you get them all on. And that's okay. Remember, these are, this is nature. These are flowers. They are not going to be perfect. That is okay. Now that you have your daisies done, you might want to go ahead and add some leaf type greenery things to it as well. So we're going to do that right now. First thing you're going to do is take any green you like. This is a leaf green from Craft Harbor Paper and we're going to make a double thick length. And to do that I tore off a strip, it's about 6 inches long, but that's going to be way more than I need for this demo. I fold it in half and then I run a solid straight line of glue along one half of it, fold it over, and then I'm going to get that all lined up, run it between my fingers a few times in every direction, make sure the glue is nice and spread. And when that dries, it's pretty thick and it's pretty sturdy and it's great for making branches or any type of outlines. I do have some videos on this and I will link that in the description box down below. I do have a strip here that's dry. It's a little bit easier to work with when the glue dries because like I said, it gets really nice and stiff and hard. I'm gonna take that, um, my work board again, put my, my wax paper on it and get this little stem for my, my leaves lined up with some pins and then this strip is about two to three inches long. I didn't measure it, I'm just guessing here. About two or three inches long. And what I'm gonna do now is roll it up all the way end to end. Needle or slotted tool will work fine. Let it open up just a hair. And add a little glue to set the end.
to shape these pieces, we're going to give it a solid pinch all the way through and then give it a little bend. You can do this over your fingers or over a tool if you'd like to. Kind of just push it over the handle. But I'm kind of looking for one side to be completely pinched to a point and the other side to be a little bit less so. You're going to end up wanting to make a few of these for each branch. Uh, try to go for an odd number that always looks a little bit better. This demo home only ended up making four in different sizes, but you can see in the final product I, I ended up doing a bit more than that. And I just wanted to show it again just to make sure that everybody saw it the first time because these are pretty small. Roll up a short length all the way and glue the end. Give it a solid pinch all the way through, but focus on one end so that can be really tight. Oops. And give it a little bit of a bend. There we go. Again, you can attach these any method you like. I always like to do a little bit of a dip. It's just, I find it's a little bit more efficient. It takes some less time. And I'm not sure why I started on the side here. I've never done it that way, but that's what happened today. What I would normally do is do a little bit of a dip and start with the smaller pieces because again you can make these little shapes in different sizes. Put a small one right on the tip just like that and then do a couple on either side to end up being five. I think five looks really nice. And then you can also do other offshoots on the same branch and put some more on. Just fill it up whatever way you think is best. to make sure I showed a finished project with using these daisies so I ended up using my heart template which I've used in a few videos and I'll link down below I used that under piece of wax paper and made an outline with the same leaf green paper and I made a few different daisies some of them are half daisies and then some of them are the full and a whole bunch of the greenery just to make sort of a welcome to summer little piece. It can be the front of a card, you could be framed into a wall hanging, whatever you think, but it's just an idea of how you can use the daisies just to make a sweet little design. As always, leave any questions you have about any of the techniques I used today or any other thoughts down in the comment section and I'll answer those as quick as I can. I will link to the supplies that I use, the paper colors, and any other videos or I will also leave the link to that heart template down in the, uh, the description box below the video just so you have that if you need. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you can be notified the next time I share a video and I hope that you enjoy this one. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.